Okay, walk well, okay, so we're in that journal page 11, reflecting transformations. We have f of x equals negative a, parentheses, negative bx, minus h, parentheses, plus k. When the negative in front of the a, it reflects over the x-axis, and when ne is in front of the b, inside the parentheses, it reflects over the y-axis. Now, I'm showing you the reflect over the y-axis nodes, but really, in the examples, we're only going to look at reflects over the x-axis, okay? All right, so if you would, go ahead and complete your notes. All right, now your notes are complete. Let's take a look at the examples. All right, now, there's going to be a little bit more examples than there normally are because I want to show you the re reflection transformation for all nine functions, okay? All right, so you have f of x equals x, a linear function, okay? I have graphed the parent function here for you. Now we're going to find the reflection of that. Well, that is g of x equals negative 1x, okay? That means that here's the x-axis. Here's the x. Got two pencils. That's crazy. All right, there's the x-axis. There's the y-axis. Okay. Now, these points are reflecting over this axis. Okay. So this point reflects over here. This point reflects here. Here, here, here. Again, we're reflecting over the x-axis, okay? Okay, so let's look at what the new points are, okay? And actually, before I go into there, let me come back to the function, because I always forget this. I don't know why. But well, let's look at the domain of the parent function. Well, we know the domain and range of a linear function is negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the x-intercept is 0, 0, and the y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay? Now, let's come back to the reflection transformation. Okay? So then, let's look at the point. So, this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative, and actually let's just look at it with respect to here. At negative 2, negative 2. So let's go to negative 2. Negative 2, positive 2. Negative 1, positive 1. Because I'm just relating these key points, okay? 0, 0. 1, negative 1. And then 2, negative 2. So you can see that the f of x values chain signs. Same number, but different signs. So these were negative, now they're positive. The x's stayed the same, nothing changed with the x's, but it was when you reflect it over the x-axis, it changed the f of x values. Okay? All right, now for domain range, it's still negative infinity to positive infinity for both the domain and range. Linear domain and range, no matter what transformation you do, it's always negative infinity to positive infinity for both domain and range. X-intercept, in this case, didn't change. It's still both 0, 0, and 0, 0. Okay, the transformation reflects over the x-axis. All right, go ahead and finish up ex or linear function reflection. which I guess if we wanted a number, we could put example one, but I'm just going to leave that their name. All right, now let's look at quadratic function reflection, okay? So I've already graphed the parent function f of x equals x squared. Now let's reflect over the x-axis, which again, this is the x-axis, okay? So this point reflects over there, so now here. This point reflects is here. That stays the same. This reflects... And this reflects. So you see that the function reflected over the x-axis. Okay. And again, I always forget this. Let me come back to this before we go into these table values. Domain of the parent function we know is negative infinity to positive infinity. Range is from bracket 0 to infinity. 
y-intercept and x-intercept are both 0, 0. Okay, now let's look at the reflection points. So it was negative 2, 4. Now it's negative 2, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 4. And you can see that these va the y values reflected over the x-axis and the x-values stay the same. Okay? My transformation reflect over the x-axis. All right. Go ahead and finish up that. All right. Reflection transformation in general page 11 continued. Absolute value function reflection. Okay, again, I've graphed the parent function here. Now let's reflect over the x-axis because of the negative in front. And I don't think I say it, but let me say it again. Basically, we're reflecting over the x-axis because of our notes say that when you have negative 8, and you're going to have negative 8 in all the examples because that's the uh, transformation we're addressing, okay? And anyway, negative 8, reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so, ah, this time I didn't forget. Let's get domain or interrupt value. So domain is negative infinity, two positive infinity. Range is bracket, zero to infinity. The x-intercept is zero, zero. And y-intercept is zero, zero. Now, just as I, I'm proud of myself for not forgetting that, I forgot to get the domain range for here. All right, so domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. Range, now it was bracket zero to infinity, but it reflected. Now it's negative infinity to zero bracket. The x-intercept is still zero, zero. And wire step still zero zero. All right, I apologize for getting that, but let's get back on track and keep going. All right. Now we've got the domain and range identified x intercept and y intercept. Now let's look at reflecting these values. So again, we're reflecting each of these points over the x axis. So this is reflected here, here that stays there. All right. All right. So now the point was negative two, two. Now it's negative two, negative two. Negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, negative one, and two, negative two. All right, domain, still negative infinity to positive infinity. The range was going from 0 to infinity. Now it's going from negative infinity to 0. Bracket. The x-intercept and y-intercept is still 0, 0. Okay. Transformation reflects over the x-axis. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and finish up absolute value function reflection. Now let's look at rational function reflection. So again, I've graphed the parent function, and I apologize, that shouldn't be in yellow. I got. Let me redo that so it's not confusing with the reflection. And I don't know if you caught this, but the reflection and transformation is in yellow, and the parent function is in just pencil. So f of x equals 1 divided by x. Okay. All right. So then we have that the parent function graphed. Now let's reflect these over the x-axis. So this was here. It reflects, and it's here. 
and this reflects in this here. So our curve is here. So our new point is 1, 1. It's still undefined at 0. And then 1, negative 1. Okay. Now let's look at the domain of the parent function. Okay. So we know the domain is from negative infinity to 0 or 0 to infinity. And then the range is the same thing. The x-intercept, there are none, and the y-intercept, there are none. Okay. All right. Now, for the transformation, or, yeah, the reflective transformation, the domain range is still the same because it's still undefined at zero, both in the x and the y, and still going from negative infinity to positive infinity in both directions. So domain is negative infinity to zero or zero to infinity. There's still no x, no, no x intercept and no y intercept. And the transformation is reflect over the x axis. Okay. Right, let's go ahead and move on to the next. All right, reflection transformation. All right, so again, you have the parent function graphed. Okay, so now let's graph the reflection. Okay, oh, and actually, let me take a step back. Let's not forget domain range. Domain range for a cubic function is negative infinity, positive infinity. For both, domain range. The x intercept is 0, 0 for both. Now, when you reflect, this point now becomes here. This point is here, here. And there. All right. Domain of range is still, no matter what you do to the transformation, the cubic function is domain of range is always going to be negative infinity, positive infinity. And the x intercept and y intercepts are still 0, 0, and 0, 0. All right. Now the points, new points are negative two eight, negative one one, still zero zero, one negative one, and two negative eight. Transformation is reflect over the x-axis. All right. Go ahead and finish up. Cubic function reflection. All right, now let's take a look at cube root function reflection. Okay, domain range for cube root are always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity for both. And the x intercept and y intercept are 0, 0, 0, 0. Now we reflect over the x axis, so this is here, here here and here. All right, and the points are 8, 2, 1, 1, I'm sorry, negative 8 to negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 8, negative 2. Domain is still negative infinity 
to positive infinity. Our range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Next random attempt is 0, 0, 0, 0. And transformation is reflect over the x axis. All right, go ahead and finish up cube root function reflection. All right, now let's take a look at exponential function reflection. Okay. So again, now if, I guess I forgot to graph the parent function. We'll graph that now. Negative 2, negative 0.25. Negative 1, negative 0.5. 0. And actually, wait, there's a mistake on that. Those should be positives. But I didn't graph it because I made a mistake there. 1, 2, 4. I think what I was doing is the reflection, which we'll get to in a second, but the parent function is this. And then 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And then the domain is negative infinity. To positive infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. The x intercept is none. And the y intercept is 0, 1. Now, we're going to reflect over the x axis. So this points here, here. So then the points are negative 2, negative 0 0.25, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, and then z let's see, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 4. Domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Range is now negative infinity to zero parentheses. The x-intercept, still none. And then the y-intercept is zero, negative one. Okay, go ahead and finish up exponential function reflection. Oh, almost forgot, transformation, reflect over the x-axis. All right, let's look at logarithmic function reflection. All right, so let's graph the logarithmic uh, pair function. So zero is undefined, has the asymptote there. So one, zero. And hold on. There's a mistake there. Let me come back to that. I'm concerned about that point, but let's see two, one, four, two, eight. One, two, three. Give me a second. I'm going to come to my handy, handy journal, which I'm hoping I keep one. I'm hoping you are keeping your journal. So when what happened to me right now is you can basically, and this is why I want you to have a journal, is that you can go back and check notes to see if there's something you forgot and need to remember. For me, I want to go back and look at the log parent function to double check my points to make sure I have them correct. So you can see here, that's the page that I pulled to. See if I can get my camera there. 
true law of parent function, so I'm going to use that to make sure I have the points correct, okay? All right, and so let's double check. When x is 0, it's undefined, 1, 0. Okay. So let me erase those points. I don't know what was going on there. But now by using my journal, I can correct what I had trouble with. And again, that's why, and I'm kind of glad that I made the mistake is so you can see how you can use your journal to help you as you go through on problems. So zero, when x is zero, it's undefined. Okay, one, zero. And then two, one, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, two. And we really don't need that eight, three. Okay. And we know from the notes that it goes like that for log. Okay. All right. Domain is parentheses zero to infinity. Range is negative infinity. To positive infinity. It does not have an x or y intercept. Or wait, oh, almost made a mistake there. The x intercept is one zero, and the y intercept is none. Okay. All right. So now we're going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay. And so that's on the x-axis, so that can't reflect. This can reflect here. This can reflect here. And so then you know, it looks something like this. Okay, so our new points are zero, it's still undefined. One zero still one zero, but it's two negative one and four negative two. Domain is still from zero to infinity. Range is still from negative infinity to positive infinity. The x intercept is still one zero, and there's still no y intercept. And the transformations reflect over the x axis. Okay, go ahead and finish that up and let's look at the last function. Okay, square root function reflection. Okay, so we have the parent function graphed. Let's look at domain. Domain is bracket 0 to infinity. Range is bracket 0 to infinity. The x-intercept and y-intercept are 0, 0. Now for the reflection. So that stays the same. So that point is 0, 0. That stays the same. This point reflects, and now that becomes 1, negative 1. And then this point reflects, and that becomes 4, negative 2. Domain and range are still bracket 0 to infinity. The x intercept and y intercept are still 0, 0. All right. And so there you go. That finishes up your notes. And now you, you have seen all of the, the parent function reflections. Okay. Now at this point, you want to finish up your notes. Okay. And then I'm looking at the calendar. You want to walk, start working on, let me grab that calendar. See the 1.3 my.hrw.com assignment. Okay, so with that, have a wonderful Wildcat day.